Hi and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Mimo and today we're going to discuss Egyptian Arabic letters. The first thing you need to know is that there is no such thing as Egyptian Arabic letters. The only thing that exists is Arabic letters. So genius, what is the difference? Well there isn't a difference in written form, but there is definitely a difference in the spoken form. As you can see in front of you, the Arabic alphabet consists of 28 letters to be exact. And I have them separated into three groups. We have all of the letters and we also have the letters that are pronounced differently in Egyptian Arabic. And the third group of letters are the letters that don't exist in English. If you don't really know how the Arabic language works, this is how it is. Simply, we have MSA Modern Standard Arabic, which is the Arabic used in official cases. For example, uh, TV news, documents, and the written language in general. However, spoken Arabic is different and varies depending on the country. Each country has its own dialect, if you will. However, all countries can understand each other, except for maybe Algeria, Morocco, and uh, Tunisia, since they may have a stronger French influence included. And between you and me, they speak very quickly. Okay, back to the topic. So what is the difference between Egyptian pronunciation and the modern standard Arabic pronunciation of the letters? As you can see in front of you, we have some letters, and those are the ones that we pronounce differently in Egypt. So the first letter we have in front of you right there is th, 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 th. And this sounds like the TH sound from thing. In Egyptian Arabic, this letter is always changed into s, an S sound, or in Arabic, seen. As you can see, just right in front of you. A couple of examples would be like the word hadith. Instead of saying hadith, we say hadith. And this word has two different meanings. The first meaning is modern. Modern. Hadith. An example would be the mashru'a hadith. This is a modern project. Another example would be Thabit. In Egyptian Arabic, we say sabit. Sabit means something stable, uh, something that doesn't change or fixed. Um, it can be used in many different contexts. For example, il kursi sabit. This means the chair is stable and it isn't moving or, you know, it's just stable. The second letter that we have is jim. In Egyptian Arabic, we say gim. So instead of the J sound, we say the G, G, G sound, Gim. A very simple example would be Jamil. In Egypt, we say Gamil, and this means beautiful. Please note that some areas in Egypt do say this letter as J, like it's supposed to be in MSA, but it depends on where you come from. If you go further to the south of Egypt, we call it Upper Egypt, they say Jamil, but also they say something different than what most people in Egypt do. And I'm going to come to that in a minute. Letter number three is Vel. Vel. And this letter we say Bel, which sounds like a D. Um, as you noticed, I'm sure you have, um, in Egypt, we don't really pronounce the difficult stuff that requires your tongue between your teeth, like the th and th and all those difficult things, we just replace them. A good example for that would be dahab. A good example for that would be dahab, and this means gold or went. Yep, it does. In Egyptian Arabic, we say Dahab with a D sound. If you say Dahab in Egyptian Arabic, this means gold. But if you say Dahab in Egyptian Arabic, it doesn't mean went. 
No, it never does. Because we use a different verb for went or go in Egyptian Arabic. And this next one is called the. This one is kind of confusing and can be difficult to know because it really depends on the word. Sometimes it sounds like the, and sometimes it sounds like z, like a z sound. So, for example, we would say dhalma or dhalom. This means like dark or the darkness. In Egypt, we say dhalma which sounds like a da, da. This is one of the sounds that don't exist in English. Uh, da, da, dalma. And sometimes we say it as z. So, for example, a dhul, in which means injustice. And um, in Egyptian Arabic, we say a zul, zul. We don't say a dhul, no. We say a zul. So, some words are like this and some words are like that. And the final letter which is also kind of confusing because it depends on the word is cough. Cough. This is a sound that doesn't also exist in English. This letter is pronounced like alif which is the first letter in the alphabet. For example, uh, a pen would be kolam or kolam, something like that. And in Egypt we say elem. Elem. Kawi, which means strong. Um, in Egyptian Arabic, we say awi. But if you want to say someone is very strong, you don't say awi awi. We say kawi awi. So the one with the ka means strong, and the one with the a uh means very. But some people say strong as awi. Yeah. So getting back to the part about Upper Egypt, this letter is very different. We mentioned before that the letter Jim is pronounced as Jim in Upper Egypt. However, it's different in other areas of Egypt. For example, we said Jim in Egypt is G. We say Gim. So Jamil becomes Gamil. But in uh, Upper Egypt or the South, they say Jim as it is. No changes. However, when it comes to Kof, we say a and they say g. For example, heart, it means kalb. This is the MSA way. In Egypt, we say elb with the a uh sound. In Upper Egypt, they say gelb with the g. So kof in Egypt is pronounced in two different ways. It's either a uh or g. And it depends on where you come from in the country. Uh, you, as someone who's learning the language, I would recommend you use a uh, because this is what you're going to use in most areas and this is what people say in most areas um, yeah thank you very much for watching the video till the end I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you really learned something from this video if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and help the channel grow by sharing my videos and subscribing to the channel Thank you very much for watching and have a really good day.